In this video, we're going to look at the LFO section over here, and it's this whole horizontal row. Now, in the last video, we looked at modulating things like amplitude, pitch, filter cutoff, and filter resonance by velocity. LFOs are another way of modulating these parameters, and LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and it's basically a recurring, repeating waveform that happens very slowly, and you can sync it to tempo optionally. And it'll modulate these parameters based on the settings that we have here. So it's kind of like a way of automating the modulation of amplitude, pitch, or filter, or panning in this case as well, rather than having it result from a performance gesture like velocity. There are two LFOs available in Sample Tank 3, and we select them by clicking on LFO 1 or 2, and there's a couple of subtle differences between them. And the idea is that this is a cyclical repeating shape or waveform that's applied to the parameters that we set over here. So we choose the waveform here. We have a square wave, which is just kind of an on-off, you know, full-on, full-off kind of pattern. We have a triangle wave, which ramps up and down, like you can see in the image here. We have a saw wave, which goes straight up and then ramps down. We have a sine wave, which is a smooth cyclical cycle. And we have a random wave. So let's work with LFO1 now. We can sync it to tempo, meaning we can have this cyclical modulation happen at a rate that is tied to the tempo of our DAW. And when that's off, we set it in the number of cycles per second so we can control it manually. I'm going to leave it in sync for now. The depth determines how much this LFO is going to be applied to whichever of these parameters we dial up here. So how deeply the cycle is going to be used to modulate the parameters. And when it's all the way up, we have the full range of the cycle. Let's start with these controls, and I'll just demonstrate it briefly. Let me just snap these back to default. Right now, it's not modulating anything. And let me play you this little arrangement that I have. It's a little four-bar pattern. And listen to the pad sound on the first track. So it's just sustained chords, then we have some quarter notes happening and some half notes. So let's go back to Sample Tank, and let's set this to quarter notes. And I'm going to set it, just so we can really hear a dramatic effect, I'm going to set it to this kind of square wave where it's straight on and straight off, and we'll have it modulate volume. So let's put the depth up, and we'll dial this up to determine how much we want it to influence level, and you'll hear it pulsing on and off in a quarter note type rhythm. And for example, I can put it to eighth notes, and we'll hear it in eighth notes now. Now you'll notice that it's pulsing on on the off beats, and we're going to get to that in a moment. But let's go back to quarter notes. And it's pulsing in quarter note rhythms, and it's going full on on the off beats. And when it's on the actual downbeat, we're hearing it at the full off phase of this waveform shape. And I use the word phase because we have a knob here with phase, meaning we can offset where in this cycle it starts. And this is a good example to use the square waveform because it's so dramatic with the straight on and straight off or full on, full off. So with this on, or rather with this all the way counterclockwise, it's starting halfway through the phase. That's why we're hearing it on the off beats like that. If I snap this to about 12 o'clock, we'll hear the phase where the loud part is starting on the downbeats. And we can get it anywhere in between if we want. So that's the way the phase influences where in the cycle it starts. Let's go through some of the different waveforms and hear the shapes and how they influence, in this case, level. Here's the triangle type of shape. And again, we can influence where it starts in that shape. Here's the saw wave where it goes straight up and then ramps down. And let's offset this to see how that affects the sound. We have a sine wave, which is a traditional kind of smooth waveform. Yeah. 
so thereby offsetting the phase we're getting the high part of the amplitude on the offbeats. Now I want to draw your attention to this free button. This determines how the LFO cycle and shape is triggered. When it's going through its cycle, it can either, let's say I set this to half notes, for example, it can go through the cycle freely and restart every half note, or it can restart every time a note is triggered. So let's listen to the difference. I'm going to put the phase down. Let's listen to this in half notes. So in the last two bars, I have quarter notes happening, but it's going through the cycle. And listen to the difference when this mode is enabled. So it gets restarted. So two different ways of having it go through the shape. Now we have a fade button, and this allows the waveform, the cycle, the cyclical shape, rather, to sort of fade in rather than start abruptly. So let's try it on this, and we'll hear it again very dramatically. Let's listen like as is for now. And with a fade. So it softens the attack of the sudden jump. And these LFOs can be applied as well to filter pitch and panning in the case of LFO2. Let's explore that briefly. Now let me solo this part. I'm going to hit the solo button. And let's set this to a faster rate. Let's set it to 16th notes. And again, just to remind you, if sync is off here, we can set it to slow rates. And this is good for, let's say, vibrato on natural instruments like wind or string instruments. But we'll set it to 16th. And let's dial up some pitch modulation. And the different shapes will affect it differently. Random, triangle, saw, sine. It's actually easier to hear those at a slower rate. Let's go to quarter notes. So you hear the shapes of the cycle being applied to pitch. And again, we can offset the phase or fade them in. But random is interesting for these types of special effects. And let's look at using it with filter cutoff. I'm going to put this back to 16th notes. And we'll get a kind of stepped pattern of frequency modulation by altering the frequency over here with this filter knob. So let's dial this down. And I'll put this up. And let's dial this and see where we can get it sounding nice. So modulating the filter cutoff in random cyclical shapes based on these settings here. Now we can also use the LFOs to modulate pan. And to do this, we need to use LFO2. It's grayed out under LFO1. And in LFO2, there's no free mode option to toggle, but pan is enabled. And we can modulate that. So let's try maybe a quarter note like that. And let's go back to LFO1 and just turn off the filter modulation so we don't get distracted by that. And let's go to LFO2 because we can have both happening at the same time. So that's off now. Back to LFO2, quarter notes. And let's modulate the pan. And let's see what this sounds like. And again, we can have the different shapes. Let's try this. So you can hear the influence of the different shapes. And we can do a slower pan if we want with half notes maybe instead of quarter notes. So lots of interesting uses for the LFOs. We have LFO1 and LFO2, and we can modulate pitch, filter, level, and pan. And we can further influence the depth of the modulation, this knob over here, meaning how much the shape is going to be applied to the parameter. We can influence this with the LFO1 depth knob here having velocity control. So as we dial this up for real-time performance gesture, the harder we hit, the more the depth is going to increase and have these cycles and shapes affect whatever parameters we have dialed up here. 
So this is the way to sort of adjust it in terms of performance so you can play with the depth of the LFO being controlled by how hard you hit. See you for more in the next video.